As U.S. airspace becomes increasingly congested, the safe and efficient movement of air traffic in and out of terminal areas calls for a well-oiled national air traffic control system. From time to time, terminal airspace can reach maximum capacities where air traffic controllers need to amend IFR clearances in order to assure continued adequate separation between aircraft. As a pilot, or even as a passenger for that matter, we have all at some time heard about the infamous holding pattern. To passengers, a holding pattern is just a reason that they might not make it home for dinner on time. But to the users and administrators of this air traffic system, i.e. the pilots and ATC, the holding pattern is a necessary technique which is used to assure a safe and orderly flow of traffic into and out of busy terminal airspace. On this UND Aerocast episode, we will learn the UND standardization procedures for holding patterns and discover that, with practice, executing a holding pattern can be very easy and useful in situations ranging from air traffic delays to adverse weather avoidance. According to the UND Warrior, Aero, Seminole, and SR-20 standardization manuals, the objective of holding is to achieve the skill and knowledge required to enter and remain within a published or non-published holding pattern. When you think about it, a holding pattern is nothing more than a big oval, formed in a racetrack shape that is designed to keep an aircraft in a specified space for a specified amount of time. A holding pattern can be published on either airway charts or terminal charts, or can be unpublished and specified by the air traffic controller. A typical pattern is defined by the fix on which the pattern is based. Simply put, a fix is a stationary point. It could be a VOR, radial DME, NDB, intersection, GPS waypoint, anything that can define a navigable point in space. The racetrack portion of the pattern is made up of four components. The inbound leg, fix end, outbound leg, and outbound end. Under zero wind conditions, the two legs are exactly parallel and the pattern ends connect the legs via a 180 degree turn. Unlike a VFR traffic pattern, a standard holding pattern is one with a right hand turn direction and includes a timed inbound leg. In a standard holding pattern, the inbound leg is one minute long, 14,000 feet and below, and one and a half minutes long, above 14,000 feet. And while the anatomy of a holding pattern is rather straightforward, pilots are often challenged with pattern setup as it relates to non-published ATC holding clearances. Take this clearance for example. Su-55, proceed direct to the Grand Forks VOR, hold southeast on the 150 degree radial, left hand turns, 5 mile legs, expect further clearance 1355 Zulu. In this clearance, most likely due to operational restrictions, ATC has deemed it necessary to clear the pilot for a non-published and non-standard hold. An ATC holding clearance will always include the name of the fix, the cardinal direction of the inbound leg from the fix, any applicable radials or bearings that define that inbound leg, turn direction if non-standard, leg length if non-standard, the expect further clearance time, and any further applicable notes. It is the PIC's responsibility to copy and comply with the clearance or to advise ATC if unable. So with your kneeboard, how would you, as the pilot, draw this pattern? Well, let's take another look at the clearance. The pilot was cleared direct to the Grand Forks VOR, so that's the fix. ATC then specified that the pilot should hold southeast on the 150 degree radial. So that leg should be drawn from the fix in the specified direction. Since it was a non-standard pattern, ATC advised the pilot that it would be left-hand turns and five-mile legs. Once the pattern is visualized, the pilot can then decide his or her position from the fix and how to enter the hold. The Aeronautical Information Manual, or AIM, describes three different pilot-tested entry techniques, the direct, parallel, and teardrop entries. The determination for which technique to use can be based on any of three sectors which are defined around the holding pattern by extending the inbound leg and drawing a line to lop off a section of the fix end. This leaves the pilot with three sectors, a 70 degree sector for a teardrop entry, a 110 degree sector for a parallel entry, and a 180 degree sector for a direct entry. 
Depending on the aircraft's position in relation to the fix, the pilot will choose one of the entries based on their judgment and of the most efficient entry technique. A direct entry is performed by crossing the fix and then entering the pattern by immediately turning to the outbound leg. A parallel entry requires that the pilot cross the fix, parallels the inbound leg on the non-holding side while flying outbound for one minute, then turning toward the holding side of the fix and establishing an intercept for the inbound leg. Finally, a teardrop entry is performed by the pilot crossing the fix, flying at an approximate 30 degree angle to the inbound leg on the holding side of the fix for one minute, then turning to intercept the inbound leg. Once the proper entry is ascertained, the pilot should begin to slow to the proper holding speed not less than three minutes from the fix. The Aeronautical Information Manual, or AIM, dictates maximum holding speeds at 200 knots from the minimum holding altitude to 6,000 feet MSL, 230 knots between 6,001 and 14,000 feet MSL, and 265 knots from 14,001 feet MSL and above. At UND Aerospace, each aircraft has a standardized recommended holding speed. In the Piper Warrior, holding should be executed at 100 knots, in the Arrow at 100 knots, the Seminole at 110 knots, and the Cirrus SR-20 at 120 knots. As the pilot establishes a constant holding speed, a typical standard holding pattern will be flown by crossing the fix using the desired entry procedure and then continuing the hold until ATC issues a new clearance. Prior to crossing the fix for the first time, the pilot should consider the five T's, a helpful memory aid designed to make the pilot situationally aware during the entire holding pattern. Turn, time, twist, throttle, and talk are all critical elements that must be considered before making any turn in a holding pattern. Let's simulate a teardrop entry into a standard pattern holding off of the 180 degree radial from the Grand Forks VOR. Prior to executing the teardrop, the pilot would consider a turn to 150 degrees for the teardrop entry, beginning timing for approximately one minute as the aircraft crosses the VOR, twisting the VOR's OBS setting to 360 degrees with a two indication for correct sensing on the inbound leg, adjusting throttle to maintain the proper holding airspeed, and talk to let ATC know that SU-55 is established and holding at 6,000 feet, time 1340 Zulu. As the aircraft crosses the fix and proceeds outbound on the teardrop entry, it would then be time to reset the 5Ts for the turn inbound. After flying outbound on the teardrop for one minute, the pilot will turn to intercept the inbound course, begin timing once the wings are level, verify that the OBS is still twisted for correct sensing inbound, and throttle and talk should already be accomplished. As the pilot levels the wings and begins timing, he or she will then look for the timing to match one minute upon crossing the fix. The pilot will then turn to the outbound leg after considering a new set of five T's, time for one minute outbound in a zero wind situation, and consider a new set of five T's and turn inbound once again and fly back to the fix for a complete one minute standard holding pattern. Timing on the outbound leg will always start when the airplane is directly abeam the fix. In the case of this VOR hold, the pilot would know he or she has crossed the abeam point as the to from indication flips in the cockpit. That is the point where outbound timing can be started. 